Hi everyone, I'm Sid Iris and I started to knit from like two and two and a half years ago and then I couldn't stop. I'm totally in love with knitting or like crochet or all the fiber, yeah, fiber arts. And uh, last time I talked about the sweaters and accessories like shawls and cowls and so on that I knitted in 2023. Then this time I would like to talk about the knitting plans for 2024. So I currently have some work in progress and then there's a few uh, projects that I'm planning to knit in the future. So I have some yarns or like I still have, I have some ideas with some patterns. But anyways, uh, the main goal for 2024 is to use up the stash yarn I have uh, in my place. So I have like a few skeins or like some leftover yarn, so like half a bowl of yarn that I needed before and then I got this yarn left. So I would like to, I would try to use up this yarn that I already have instead of buying new ones. So uh, then I will start with some work in progress. Uh, I started to already knit some sweaters and so on. And there's some sweater I started last year, but I haven't finished them yet. But anyways, we can start with the first one. So the first one, if you have followed my Instagram, maybe you have seen some pictures of it already in my story. And so this one is Lucrezia blouse, Lucrezia blouse. It's a design by Fable Knitwear. Yep, so it's uh, the yarn I used is Camarose Midnight Soon, the color white. Anyways, it's the white color. And uh, I knitted with two strands of it. The original pattern called for two strands of mohair, but I couldn't use mohair. I, I think I am a little bit allergic to mohair. Anyways, uh, whenever I wear a mohair, clothes I will always it was all it will always be so itchy for my personal experience so I think I'm not really I'm not really into mohair it's so itchy I couldn't I don't know like I just couldn't and then there was one time I also knitted a project in mohair and then it shed so much and the the fiber made me like the, the long fibers made me having like itchy nose and itchy eyes so maybe mohair is not my it's not the best yarn for me so i use this is camaros me not soul so it's an alpaca blend with like uh, wool and i think lyle cell as well for the core fiber but anyways this is the lucrezia blouse and you can see that it's pretty near to the finish line <laughs> I would say. So the body is finished, it's pretty cropped, you can see, and then there's some like, lace motifs. Uh, the left sleeve is done, and then the right sleeve is current, like halfway through, so it's not so long to the finish line. And then I will try to get some elastic bands, maybe from some thrift shops, like secondhand shop or maybe so on. I will try to find some elastic bands for the, yeah, for the neckline and especially for the sleeves here. So you see here, it, the, the, the main effect is to have it like a bit tighter here near the cuff so it will like flare out like beautifully and then that needs some elastic bands to give some support to create that effect so i would do that so this is pretty uh it's go it's gonna be finished pretty soon the first one okay, so for the second one this is also a sweater that i I cast it on last year and then I stopped a bit with the color work and now this year the color work is done but 
I would try to finish the body and then the sleeves. So this is the sweater that called the Ashmore sweater by Unwind Knitwear. So you can see, I really like the <laughs> contrast color. Here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, so the Ashmore sweater. Uh, and uh, I have like I have saved a pattern for many like for a long time I already liked the pattern for a long time ago and then I just wasn't sure what kind of yarn I want to use or like wasn't sure if I want to start and knit the project but anyways I decided to do that at last because I just love that motif so much maybe it would be more it will be smoother after I block it. But anyways, I think the pattern, the motif is so beautiful. And for the yarn, the main color, the white and creamy color is from Knitting for Olives. And the color is She. I think it's called, it's Cloud in English, She. And it's a bit like creamy white. So it's not pure white or like, not so yellowish because I don't really like the yellowish white wool <laughs> I would say but anyways I think it's a pretty cute color and for the contrast color the blue and purple one the contrast color it is from Fru Fjellman yep and I don't really remember the color and I don't think there's I think I bought the last one from her so it's anyways it's a Swedish hand dye and dyer and Fru uh, Fjellman so I bought the yarn from her that's the contrast color and uh, then we will see when this will be done I would say there's still a long way to go with the body but anyways I think I would need it a little bit cropped as well maybe like my hay sweater like the length like of my hay sweater and then the sleeves, we'll also see, like, it's nothing, nothing new, the sleeve, I guess. But anyways, that's for it. Yeah, and the name for Olive, I actually bought it in Copenhagen when I went there to travel. And uh, it was really nice, like, a dream come true to get to visit the shop. Like, it's so beautiful. You see all the small balls like before you only see it on internet but like actually see them in person is a whole different kind of experience you see the small balls on the shelf and you see the samples all the the baby baby clothes and then the uh, the adult sweaters and then combination swatches of merino and mohair like you see all of them in person it's so fun and then you actually get to see the colors so you know how they actually look like in your bare eyes instead of a color on the internet that you will always be like unsure if that the color if that is the color you actually like so yeah because i was like there's a few colors in mind before i went to the shop but I was a bit sure, unsure about whether it would be good contrast with the, yeah, with the blue purple yarn. But anyways, I get to see them in person, get to touch them in person, and I like ask the, <laughs> ask the shop owner and so on. So it's really nice experience to get to buy the yarn in the shop. Yeah, that's Ashmore. The next one is also a color work sweater. This sweater is called the uh, Hinterland sweater and it's by Jennifer Steingast. Uh, the yarn is New Tiden yarn. I don't really remember the colorways, but it's also like from last year or like yeah, it's been a while ago and you know like the new Tiden yarn, their color is limited, so only once in a month. 
or like so so it's a dark blue and then i have the white yarn and let me show you the lights look here Ooh. here is the white and uh, this is the dark blue oh, i really love the smell of this wool plate it just smells so so nice like Swedish wool it just I don't know I have some kind of like the cold temperature feeling and then the grass the smell of the grass oh my god it's twining but anyways let me just not twist anyways this one I actually started I actually cast it on pretty early in 2023 or even like in 2022 i'm not so sure but i know this project have been <laughs> has been a whip for working process for pretty long time i would say okay now it's on twist but yeah uh, where is the this is the front so uh i would say because i wanted to try to knit a uh, new tiden, yarn for color work like one strand knitted in, in color work sweater so everything is knitted only in one strand no mohair no double strands so yeah i tried and i don't know if i actually like the effect it i don't know my color work is always the rose is always a bit of, a little bit longer so it created that the yoke is really really it's really in depth actually the color work should only be on the yoke but since i don't like to have the yoke being too uh deep that would create like the a big space under your armpit and then the sleeves would be hard to it will be hard to like raise your hands if the yoke is too deep, too long. So I splitted the body and sleeves before the color work motif was ended. And so you can see that some part like these is the color work motif is pattern is not done. And the body you can sleep, see the body is like this. Body is done. Hope you can see. And the sleeves, the right sleeves, the also the color work is also done. So you can also see, you, I split them into two parts. And uh, there's some color work pattern at the end of the sleeves at, at, as well. But I'm starting to procrastinate again. So now this is just, a, I, put it, I put it aside only. But I will hope to finish this, actually, this... Um, in 2024 i really want to get it done uh, no matter when but i want to get it done otherwise it will always always just be put aside but i don't know since it's nutrient yarn and i only knit it in one strand so i knit this really really slow i really need to be careful not to break the yarn even though i don't think the two plates these two plates aren't that fragile it's pretty fine to knit them in one strand only but i still need to be careful and then i yeah i need to be more considerate while it is and more focused on this so as well i would be i would get a little bit tired more easily when i knit this so that might also be the reason why i don't knit this sweater so often but anyways i want to get this sleeve at least this sleeve done and then the other sleeve that so that it could finally grow well sleeve island i guess all the knitters know sleeves island that's the problem and the body actually i'm not so sure if i want it to be cropped body it's not done yet but the body i don't know if i want it to be cropped or i want it to be like an oversized really long body in the beginning my idea was to have it cropped but since it's a bit it's much wider than expected so it seems to be a good idea to have it become a 
oversized and uh, super long <laughs> super long sweater but still I'm I would I would see after the sleeves are done and uh, to make sure whether I want it in this length the body in this length or I would have it longer and as for the color you see the color is also a bit wide since when I cast it on it's only like once for a new tint and then it would just widen up so much uh, I will make some ribbings along the neckline but I think it also is pretty it also have some style it became like a boat neck so I think it still have some fashionable elements in here I will post some uh, work in progress photo uh, here later on and that's before the sleeve started uh, before like when I only had the body I tried it on and even though it's pretty wide open but I think it looks pretty yeah it still looks pretty stylish I would say because of the boat neck yeah that's for this hinterland next one is a pretty different project this project is a, is a bit experimental uh, this is a crocheted bag so first the yarn is from Sorella yarn again and this colorway is called garden room uh, this is a collection from I guess two years ago but anyways I just I like this kind of green and then purple bluish variegated yarn and I think this color looks really good in crochet like crochet granny squares and so on because they would they would like have a cluster of different colors and they would it would like pull the color would have pulling and then it looks really nice so I can show you on these granny share granny squares Mm, let me show you so you see like it will create a really nice and interesting effect with crochet fabric but for knitting it would be a bit too stripy for my personal preference but so anyways I made uh, these crochet grannies the pattern is from Sorella as well she had some she had a granny square pattern on her website so I I got inspired from her and I made a few more repeats, a few more rounds than what her originally uh, wrote on the website. And I have uh, actually I bought a sock set. So this is a garden room and then there's this, this purple yarn. I don't really remember the name, but it's some aubergine. <laughs> aubergine. I don't really know, but. I would link that in the description so that's a sock set so I have the main color in the middle like for four rounds and then the fifth round is in the contrast color the mini skein contrast color in the purple color so I made these granny squares and I crochet them together and the shape of this bag is inspired by a Japanese crocheter. She's, her name is Hana, and I will also link her in the description. She has so many beautiful crochet projects, like very stunning and beautiful. And yeah, so I got inspired by her with this uh, bag shape, shape of this bag. So, uh, but I don't know, I'm not a bit sure maybe my crochet skill is not that good so this look a bit like bulky in some parts like it bulks up in some part maybe because I haven't uh, blocked it yet totally but I don't know so far I'm a bit unsure about how this would turn out and uh, so I don't know we will see I, I will still keep on crocheting and we'll see so the body is done and now I am currently crocheting the the edge of the, the upper edge of the bag and then I will also crochet the hand uh, the bend of this bag as well so we will see I will hope 
this will be done soon. <laughs> Otherwise, I also put this aside for several months. And even though it's really close to finishing line, but because I have other projects in mind and then this was a bit abandoned. But now I'm picking it up again and I hope to finish this as soon as possible. So since we already talked about this yarn and there's pretty much yarn left in, in spite of uh, in spite of the hand band is not done yet, I believe I will still have like half of this uh, this cake but uh, my real plan is to knit a bag called pearl pouch the knitting pattern is by Tori Yu but uh, I I got some new ideas now and maybe instead of a bag I would like to crochet this in a like table decoration i think the name for it is like doily or doily doily so i would like to knit no not knit i would like to crochet this is into like a lace table decoration since i like the crochet effect so much it's just really gorgeous really like a garden room like the uh, plants so maybe that would be the project for the leftover yarn instead of the pearl pouch but I maybe would knit the pearl pouch in some other yarns that I have left but I'm not so sure but anyways that's the idea for this yarn and this project so if you've seen the project I knit in 2023 I think you will not be unfamiliar with this sweater this sweater is a salty sweater if you remember and last time I talked about I'm unsure whether I should lengthen it a little, more, a little bit more or not and uh, I actually tried it on today and now I'm really certain that I want to lengthen it so I have the ball I uh, ordered a month ago that I wanted to use like one more, one ball more and so now I would start to like after the Lucrezia blouse I think I would start to adjust this so I would like cut it from this two by one ribbing and then lengthen it and then like sew them together the ribbing parts and the yeah the and the ribbing part and the two by one rib parts so that's the idea for this and I have the yarn finally I want to make this I want to uh, have it done as soon as possible since it's um, like a thick sweater and this is better to wear it in winter instead of like spring or or summer and now we are approaching to spring so I hope I still get some time to wear it anyways maybe spring I can still wear it since here is so cold but the summer I really I don't think I can wear this in summer since this is alpaca yarn and alpaca is so warm and yeah so i would like to f uh i would like to fix this as soon as possible yeah so this might be the next project like next um sweater surgery after the lucrezia blouse so this might be the next project or next adjustment after the Lucrezia blouse. So after all this work in progress I would like to talk about the future projects uh, that I like to knit in 2024 and so like these are only yarns or uh, projects in mind. So the first is I think I also talked about it in the last video that I would like to knit uh, like a classic sweater in this variegated yarn from Adventures in Yarn Craft 2023 Advent. This, I have some leftover yarn so I can show you here. And then I would combine it with this uh, Mina Sul strand. So this is the idea for this yarn. Uh, one strand of the fingering weight and one strand of this um, alpaca. 
fluffy strand then I will create a plastic sweater Currently I have two patterns in mind but maybe in the future some new ideas will pop up, I don't know but so far I would like to knit this combination in No Frills Sweater by Petite Knit so I saw my cousin one uh, one time I visited my family and I, my cousin had a so nice sweater on her and I asked her if this was hand knit and she said yes this was knit by her mom so and I asked for the pattern and it's no frill sweater so I was so surprised that no frill sweater looks so good in person maybe because she had it a bit like wider so it's a bit also like a boat neck style and I just totally in love with that kind of design so maybe I would like to knit in no frill sweater but otherwise I was planning to knit this in cinema sweater by Kutuba Kika since I don't know, it, she has a sample in uh, the fingering hand dyed and a uh, strand in alpaca and I think that will look pretty good so that's the other idea of this sweater I like other idea for pattern for this yarn so either no frill sweater or cinema sweater and I will get the yarn soon the yarn is at my like friend's place now so I will get it soon and then I have the alpaca so as soon as I get the hand dyed I think I will cast it on pretty immediate <laughs> immediately I guess because I just want to knit this I'm so excited super excited since we already talked about the uh, advent yarn from Adventure in Yardcraft, I have like half the fade left. Oh, here's the, the card from the advent. It's so beautiful. And then there's some colorways. So I have half of the fade left, if you can see here. And I checked the yardage I have left, like I, I, uh, I weighed the yarn and it's like half skein left for the minis. I think this yarn will be enough for the Scrappy Stripe sweater by Marie Gannon. So the Scrappy Stripe uh, sweater, I can show you the, uh, I will post the picture here. Uh, it's a main color and then the fade color like striping all the way throughout the sweater and I think it looks really nice it doesn't be too it would it wouldn't be too busy with the colors because of the contrast yarn or like the basic like the background color so I would like to uh, buy a few skein of white DK weight yarn now I have a few uh, yarns in mind from Sunness Garn, maybe Sunness Garn Smart or Sunness Garn uh, Double Sunday. I'm not so sure yet, but I will check them in the uh, shop. So that will be the background color, and then I will have this fade that will stripe along the whole sweater. And I think that will look that will look really nice. And I don't need to buy so much new yarns, I believe. Yeah. So that's the plan for this, but this is not in a hurry. So I would like this. Will, I think I will start and knit this later in the year. The next pattern is Bifuka Vest by Teti Lutsak. Uh, it's a uh, knitwear designer that I also followed for many years. I have actually tested for a pattern. Uh, a pattern for her is the Silen Pullover. So yeah, it's, I like her design with the botanic motifs and then the like some uh, Ukrainian inspired pattern. And the Bifuka vest, uh, I would like to knit them in these three skein of yarn. I, I hope I have enough with the, the main color. But this yellowish yarn is actually i bought it in norway i went there to uh, travel and then i there was a market outdoors i bought it last summer there was a market outdoors and a stand 
that's selling uh, Norwegian wool. They have their own uh, wool. They're so beautiful, like spun and then like some, like the carpet. I don't know, but anyway, so there's a stand that's selling Norwegian wool, and she also has some uh, plant dyed wool. So this is actually plant dyed, plant hand dyed wool, and it's hundred percent wool and from Norwegian sauer. Anyways, it's a little bit rusty but the color is really good so yeah and the plant color is from Huldrestri anyways I will maybe google it and pull it later on what that means but I be she explained to me but I forgot I think it's some kind of leaf and then she will plant it the color they can dye it like for several batches then they will create different kind of different tones different depths of tone with the color so first I think it will be like more brownish and then it will be like this golden yellow and then it will be lighter and lighter color but this one is so nice I, I even though I'm not an earth tone or like green earthy brown tone person this yellow is just gorgeous I don't I like this kind of yellow and I would I would when I bought this I had in mind that I want to use this as a contrast color in any kind of um, any kind of color work project and it's 50 grams so I believe I can use use it up pretty much because I don't really need a hundred gram skein for a color contrast color so I think this can be used I think I can even use this for two projects but anyways, this one I might use this in Bifuga vest first for the contrast color. And then this white yarn is also from a uh, market. It's uh, from the... Uh, we had a local uh, Christmas market last December and I saw this yarn and it's super, super soft Swedish wool. Super soft. And I was totally in love when I passed by the stand and then like it had a touch. It's really beautiful. Um, very nice, uh, very nice white yarn, not too yellowish. And it's really soft and well spun yarn. I think it's a fine wool. Yeah, it's a fine wool. And it looks like... Uh, I would say it leans toward um, sport weight, sport weight, not really like DK, but some part maybe is a bit DK, but I think it leans toward sport weight, not really, maybe a little bit finger, but I don't know, I will use this as the base, uh, the main color, and then this as the contrast color, and since the Bifuga vest is pretty fitted, it depends on your preference, but Maybe I would knit a little bit the size to have more ease for me and then I will make it a little bit cropped because the Bifuga vest is still, the ribbing is pretty long and I don't think that is needed for my personal preference because I want it to be just, just right on my waistline, just end here on my waistline. So I don't think I would need that much of yarn and I hope this would be enough. Yep, it's a bit risky when I saw the yardage, um, but I hope that would be enough. <laughs> so that's for the Bifuga vest. Next one is uh, this yarn that I have currently is Alpaca 2 from Isager. And the colorway is, uh, which colorway color is? 11 it's a little bit bluish some maybe a bit turquoise but this one i have here is leans to blue and then it also has some gray undertone as well if you see more carefully look at blay <laughs> gray black undertone i don't know if it's able to show on the camera but yeah this is the Isager and one skein is 50 grams. So I have three skeins here that is currently uh, 150 grams. 
Uh, first, I have A Mind of Knitted in Sophie Scarf by Petite Knit. And, but now I'm a bit unsure because I saw another beautiful shawl pattern or like scarf pattern that is called uh, Tanemaki Scarf by Yuka. Tanemaki Scarf. And I will show the picture here as well. The I think the motif is so beautiful, so I'm actually planning to knit that in this yarn. But I think I don't really need to use up all three skeins in that Tanemaki scarf, because I think it will be enough with two, two skeins. One skein is 150 meters, and I believe the Tanemaki scarf doesn't need to have 70 no 750 meter would be really really a lot for a scarf so maybe two and that leads to one skein left in my stash and what should i do with that i'm not so sure but maybe since i have some yarn left a lot of yarn left from my ashmore sweater the contrast color I have this much left and so maybe I may combine them too and knit a color work cowl and uh, I'm not so sure about a pattern if I'm going to like uh, knit one following a pattern or I will improvise something or maybe currently I have uh, ideas in mind that I may search up some like more Norwegian color work motif I think the Norwegian color work motif is so beautiful, like the a little bit like snowflakes and then like the a little bit complex color work patterns. But anyway, I might search up some pattern like either from the net or like I will go to library and search if there's any pattern books. So I may use that kind of I will use the pattern and then combine these two colors together. So like this might be the base color, like the main color and the contrast color or so on. I will see and hope this is a good combination. I think it should be pretty good. I hope. Yeah, so that might happen to these two. Uh, color work cowl. And the alpaca 2 yarn is really, really soft. This Isaga alpaca 2 yarn is so so soft and I think it's a finer yarn so I don't really want to wear it like a sweater that is being a lot would that would be in a lot of use I don't want it to like peel a lot so I'm planning to do them in like either scarf and a cowl this kind of accessory projects okay now we are going to the end of the video there are only some small ideas now uh, if you remember, I had a blue uh, tweed sweater from two, uh, the, my first video and I have still like this much of yarn left, you can see. And I was planning to knit this in some kind of like a headband or like a hair tie. Uh, I have a pattern in mind now, it's called Dahlia Hair Tie Bow by Isabel Cecilia uh, from my knit uh, closet, my knit closet, and uh, I will use some scrap yarn for that pattern. Uh, one of them is this uh, Viking Garn Alpaca Picasso Tweed. So that might be something. I also have some uh, leftover yarn from uh, my fingerless mitts. Uh, this yarn is from the uh, skein and the stitches and the color uh, colorway is called the Georgian blue. So it's a bit uh, like a green grayish blue, a little bit turquoise, not really turquoise, but it's blue, green, grayish color, really beautiful Georgian blue. And I believe I have pretty much, I guess maybe 75 grams. I didn't really weigh it, but maybe this is enough to knit a hat. So I have another hat you have seen in the last video, the purple 
pinkish hat but I'm also thinking maybe I can knit this hat so I can have some variation that so I don't need to wear that hat all the time I can wear this hat and this will also like match with my fingerless mitt since the fingerless mitt is in this color maybe I can show you the fingerless mitt Sorry, I didn't weave in the ends, so the ends are like popping out here and there, but this is the fingerless mitt. I, the Georgian blue is a sock set, so they have the main color is the blue, green, grayish color, and then there's some gray contrast as well. So this is the fingerless mitt. The fingerless mitt. And... I may so I'm planning to knit a hat that matches with this mitten mittens. See? So something on my hand maybe that will look good. See this this mitten is really good. The pattern is Ironwork Mitts. Uh, the designer I will link that down in the description, but it's really a nice beautiful fingerless mitts and nice for autumn and spring uh, lastly I have some scrap yarn from my 2022 advent project also yarn from adventures in yarn craft and these are some small small scrap yarn and leftovers and I have a plan I might knit them in uh, some hair accessories I guess with this kind of yarn with this kind of small yarns but for which pattern I'm not so sure yet but I have that in mind and I kept it in this bag <laughs> zipper bag and uh, yeah then we will see what will happen with these anyways this also might be some hair accessory I think hair accessories are really nice for a star stash busting because you really, you only need really little little yarn and uh, you can have some decorative products that's nice so that's the idea i currently have in mind for uh, projects i want to knit in 2024 even though i have still some other skeins or like scrap yarn in my stash but i currently have no plans for them or like i didn't came up with a good idea or a good pattern for them like that suits them but so far uh, i already have a lot of projects in mind like a whole list so I think so far it's pretty good and hope I can stick to them and not procrastinate too much or like buy too much new yarns and really use up the thing I already have and uh, you can comment down below which project you look most forward to uh, that I would need in 2024 and if you are interested in how these projects would turn out or like their updates you can follow and subscribe to my channel and then you will get the follow-ups you will get the latest updates of these projects and hope this also inspires some people that uh, for the uh, either the pattern choice or the yarn choice and so on and uh, yeah i think that's for today and Hope you have a good day, good evening, good night, and if you're knitting, hope your knitting process is going well, no froggings. And um, yeah, that's it. See you in the next video. Bye bye.